Now you can see why I was motivated to blast Tran again right away. Ran 500 milligrams for 14 to 16 weeks. Jesus Christ. I got hypersexual, aggressive, insecure, and distrusting. I was, a, I was a bouncer at the time and wanted to pick a fight with everyone and ended up in many. Got injured here and there pretty badly. Now, fortunately, I was not on trend when I was a bouncer, but horrible combo, dude. Giving a guy like a position of authority where you're literally tasked with tossing dudes on their face who are drunk and annoying, and you're on 500 megs of trend. Like, this is the worst combination possible. What's up guys, Derek from ourplacemartace.com. Today we're going to be reacting to um, the most elusive trend story of all. Apparently this post has been deleted a handful of times at this point for unknown reasons. It is, uh, I don't know, on Reddit it seems like it's so obscene that it somehow has uh, been impossible to stay up for more than 24 hours. So this thing actually ended up this thing's been personally messaged to me like multiple times at this point because every time a thread goes up with it in it, it gets deleted for some reason. So anyways, I have a version of the thread up from before it was taken down. Um, if I literally refresh this, it would delete itself. So we're reading it off of here. And um, I, I don't know why, like I honestly have not read it yet. So I have no idea why it's been banned, but I guess we will find out as we get into it. Posting for a friend, thick with a C, lambs, trend horror story. Gonna out myself as not natty in this and show my face in pics and say my name for a couple of reasons. Got into lifting in my senior year of high school, had been in a ton of sports as a young kid and used to lift on machines when I went to the weight room with my mom. Had a strong back as a kid, but gave up sports and became kind of nerdier in high school. No more lifting until the end of it. I was captain of the high school robotics team and whatnot. Started running gear in college. I was roughly 20 and a half years old. Was kind of depressed and reckless. I'm a tad autistic and didn't know then. LOL. High functioning as hell. Used to faux do a lot of drugs because I got into GHB as an alcohol replacement. If you haven't seen my GHB video, you'll see on my personal experience with it as an alcohol replacement as well as... Uh, my experience mildly g-holing during a sushi date. Also, RC benzos I could order off of my site for LGD and Liquid Cialis at the time. Um, I was dating a wonderful, beautiful girl for a while too, while like this. She cared about me, was petite and cute AF, took good care of me, but had anxiety. Kind of bad anxiety at the time too, so me risking my life with substance use broke her heart and always made her worry. We loved each other. She was my first love. She knew I was on gear, but I downplayed my use and the risks. Same with hard drug use. She trusted I knew what I was doing because I've researched this stuff to no end and started doing so well before hopping on. Knew I wanted to compete in strongman right away pretty much. And at 6'6", with good strength genetics, I felt built for it. Waited two and a half years before hopping on, though. Note that. All right, noted. Started researching it at 18. Please wait until you were over 20, at the very least, ideally mid-20s to do gear. It messes with your brain development a lot too. You don't want to mess with that in your teen years. So a lot of people don't realize your brain still is in a development phase even once you're done puberty. Like you think, oh, I'm not going to get taller. My dick's not going to get bigger. So why would I not take gear now? Well, it's, your actual neurological processes are going to be significantly different. Maybe not, maybe not mechanistically the actual process, but like your actual brain itself it's uh like literally the development of it, of it is not complete until you're in your 20s and it is something that can be not like stunted necessarily but you can have permanent alterations to your um brain chemistry with this shit um to an extent where you might have um not a totally different personality i would imagine but i i speculate much different you know tangent traits that otherwise wouldn't have been um, exacerbated had you not a, abused gear, especially things like trend in teen years. So and like if you've meant, heard me mention guys who are, uh, you know, use trend for too long a period of time, you actually notice their personality starts to get a little bit wonky. Like they actually start to seem a little odd in a very blatantly obvious way. Like when you're talking to them, you just know like some, there's a screw loose. And when you take gear early, you know, are you going to risk that screw getting loose regardless of the fact that you use trend or not? You know, I can't say for certain. All I can say is 
the majority of guys don't understand pharmacology and endocrinology well enough at you know 18 19 to even delve into this stuff in my opinion like regardless if your training is on point your diet's been on point and you've been doing it naturally for five years you know if you're not researched enough in this shit in the actual medical side of it it's um you know i would definitely advise holding off you know it's not something that you can just you know ask the first guy at your gym how to, you know, what's the best thing to do because they'll tell you dumb shit and they think it's the correct thing to do. And it's the exact same thing that most of us fell into when we first started this. We listened to the guy at the gym or the guy in the forum or the whatever. Um, and by, you know, like forums can be good. I'm just saying that you need to even be able to get to an age where you can formulate a consolidated, educated opinion based on varying resources and be able to actually figure out and discern between what seems like high quality information and not. And that ability is not developed until you start to get older and more intelligent in my opinion. Like my quality of analyzation and information, you know, consolidation and just the ability to insightfully like look into shit was much worse. Even, you know, a few years ago, you can see the, the difference in the quality of my content as I get older, like my ability to actually even articulate things and to um, the amount I've learned just in the past few years, it's, substantial and that is you know even that point where i look like an idiot compared to now that was like that's after years of research and then you so you can imagine like me starting how much of a fucking moron i was compared to start of like youtube channel me and like current me you know what i mean so that's the kind of disparity that a lot of these guys have they think they know what they're doing they think it's simple they think they figured it out and they've researched you know for a few weeks on the forums and they think they know what to do and um it gets much deeper, like not just about, you know, how to create a intelligent and responsible introductory protocol as a newbie, but in addition to that, how to interpret blood work, what to even order, where to do it, you know, what is organ imaging, should you worry about it, at what age, you know, how frequently should you do it, what's the difference between um, a calcium score and an echocardiogram, like should you be getting those, shit like that. So anyways, let's uh, continue here. Um, he, bu, 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 where was I? Sarah at C waited two and a half years before hopping on the note that started researching at 18. Please wait until you're over 20. It messes with your brain development a lot. You don't want to mess with that in your teen years. Most of the physical side effects are recoverable, manageable and short term. But I tried to commit suicide on trend. Holy shit. Noted there were other things wrong in my life too. Again, exacerbates things. So you might already be in a, a depressed individual a bipolar individual, somebody who flies off the handle easily. Throwing gear on top of that is like gas on the fire. I was a wreck. I started running trend not too long after I turned 21. It is everything people says it is and was especially so for me. I could eat donuts and fried chicken all day. It felt like and end up bigger, stronger and leaner. The first time I ran acetate, I blasted and cruised. So it was purely for the purpose of getting it to saturation, being able to clear it out if I had sides quicker. Not about clearance for recovery and PCT. Ran it at 300-ish milligrams, if I recall correctly. So again, when it comes to trend bologna sandwich, like, yeah, obviously doing something like an acetate or a short ester of any kind of compound, when you're first introducing it to your system, with the exception of probably like test, because it is bioidentical and it's like, if you can't tolerate test, it's like, well, you shouldn't be able to tolerate the fucking test coming out of your ball sack, I guess, at endogenous amounts, at least. You know, obviously that sounds silly. Obviously super physiological amounts will differ, but I mean, like doing a first cycle, like most people aren't gonna use test probe. I guess technically you could, but in general, it's the synthetic derivatives and, you know, like analogs that people are going to be better served by introducing in shorter ester variants. So using something like a nandrolone phenylpropanate versus a DECA. Like if you don't know how you respond to DECA concurrently with a test base, are you going to use, is it a wise idea to use a decanoate ester? You know, that's, that's more what I'm getting at. Not that you shouldn't ever use test probe or whatever. It's more about when you're introducing a second conflicting factor potentially that is going to, you know, you, let's say you get a debilitating side, you get brutal DECA dick. Do you want to have something with a significantly longer half-life stuck in your system for fucking months potentially just because you decide to use the can weight instead of phenylpropanate? Like, no, you want to you know put yourself in a position ideally where you can clear it out of your system if you have something go awry and uh, you need to clear it. You know, get back to just you know baseline as quick as possible. So 
You know, using a trenbolone acetate is a far smarter option than enanthate off the bat. Um, and in addition to that though, 300 milligrams, he didn't mention what his base was, if he even had one to begin with, but 300 trend is, like a lot of people don't realize this stuff came in 76 milligram ampules when it was introduced via Negma Pharmaceuticals as Parabolin. And oftentimes top pros would be using like one, two, maybe three amps a week at most, as far as I know. In the 90s, they would add, you know, Parabolin at a couple amps a week on top of their base, and that would be sufficient. And it would produce significant body comp, body, body recomp effects. It was very potent, even at dosages significantly lower than what this guy was doing. You have to keep in mind too, the Hexel, whatever the fuck, you know, Hexel, Benzel, whatever it is, that is, uh, you know, Trend Hex, AKA Parabolin, that is holding more ester weight. It is a higher ester weight than acetate. Like off the top of my head, if I recall correctly, the Parabolin, the molecular weight is something like, I don't know, like 410 Daltons or something like that. And then Trend Ace, I believe is like 310 or something like that. So you're looking at higher yield per milligram in terms of actual active hormone. So, you know, I'm sure you've seen the comparisons of testosterone and anthate versus testosterone propionate, for example, like how much the ester weight accounts for the milligram totality of the actual like milligram per milliliter and how you're getting actual more yield of hormone per, you know, milligram in the compound or in the, you know, solution. So that's the same thing with trenbolone. If you're using the parabolin, you're getting actual less, you know, active hormone per like unit milligram, essentially, in terms of molecular mass. Now, so with trenbolone acetate, not only are you getting the acute hit, like fast acting effects of it because it's into your system so aggressively. On top of that, though, you're actually getting more active hormone per milligram, essentially, due to the lower molecular weight. So this guy's running a pretty fucking high dose when you're actually sit thinking, okay, well, the pharma trend was like, you know, at most, what would you be running? Like 152 milligrams a week? Maybe, you know, in the two low 200s at most, he's running 300 on his first cycle of acetate. So, and that's not even factoring whatever his base is. So, you know, that's a lot, dude, and probably much more than you need for what this guy's baseline was. So I guess we will see his baseline after because he has a link at the bottom to uh, image share thing. So I guess we will, uh, actually, fuck it. I'm just going to jump over so we can look at his before. Okay. So this is his, uh, before here. It was 18 here. So I guess we'll look at some of the trend picks after, but that was his, uh, this is the baseline we're uh, talking about here. Let's see. So there was other things wrong in his life. I was a wreck. I started running trend not too long after I turned 21. Okay. So keep in mind, this picture is 18. So it's not like he's, you know, already on trend at this point. Um, where are we? Um, is everything people says it is, he could eat donuts, blah, 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 ran 300. Second and third time he ran enanthate, um, second ditching after a few weeks because I ended up getting rhabdo and my kidneys were failing from muscle loss. Jesus. So I needed to come off most gear and cruise. I lost a lot of muscle, 40 pounds body weight loss in a month and looking, do you even lift? This happened as a result of cell stress from long-term high doses of Accutane and strongman training. Now you can see why I was motivated to blast trend again right away. Ran 500 milligrams for 14 to 16 weeks. Jesus Christ. I got hypersexual, aggressive, insecure, and distrusting. I was a, I was a bouncer at the time and wanted to pick a fight with everyone and ended up in many. Got injured here and there pretty badly. Now, fortunately, I was not on trend when I was a bouncer, but fucking horrible combo, dude. Giving a guy like a position of authority where you're literally tasked with tossing dudes on their fucking face who are drunk and annoying, and you're on 500 megs of trend. Like this is the worst combination fucking possible. Got super into BDSM shit. My GF was pretty innocent and tame, not a knock, just that wasn't her style. And I got super sexually frustrated, borderline rapey ment mentally. By the end of it, my girlfriend was overseas studying abroad in Spain. I knew Spain has a machismo culture and she is gorgeous. Tiny blonde white girl that is foreign and sticks out there. She was a gym rat too, loved to lift, but was natty. Actually how I met her, asked her out at the gym. I knew they say not to, do I know they say not to do that guys, but she said she got catcalled all the time. I couldn't stand it. She was going out to bars with friends often like any college girl studying abroad would slash should. I got super invasive and demanding in a way it made her kind of check in. I felt awful about it. I was controlling as hell even from a distance. When she got home, it wasn't too long before we broke up. She said I was losing it and that I needed to get my shit together, but we could get back together after I did. 
I was still on trend while in therapy then and for a bit after. I tried to overdose on some of the downers I was using at the time. A hefty cocktail, almost as aspirated in my sleep. Fortunately, kinda on my side while laying on the floor unconscious in the apartment bathroom. Had to get off trend. Took probably a year to get my head straight. Even still a while longer to sort out the depression issues, but I did. If you are out there, Natalie, and this somehow gets to you, I am so sorry for what I put you through. I know it was awful and unfair. I cannot thank you enough for pushing me to go through... Pushing me to go to therapy. You saved my life. I compete in strongman. About to turn 25, have for almost three to four years, and was 300 pounds with abs at my heaviest. Picks and stuff at the bottom. And hover between 265 and 285 lean now. All right, let's go see the picks. So this is him at 18. By Barbells and Big Booty Bitches. Quite the username. Um, 1,860 pounds, 6'6". Six, six. So here he is looking pretty lean and mean at 1,995 pounds. Looking pretty good. Now here he is sauced out of his fucking gills. 21, 245 looking like literally Drago. Nice. Um, here he is. Oh shit, we got a fucking video, boys. Here we go. Let's see. Can I rewind this? The fuck? So this is a back shot. Um, showing the traps, I guess, as well as his back. So at this point, he is 23 and a half years old and 300 pounds, apparently. So obviously he's not that lean here. So his V taper isn't going to look as good as it could. You know, a lot of people, when they look at the, uh, the footage from the back, they're going to be like, oh, this is like unimpressive. You're on all that trend and blah, blah, blah. But it's like, the guy is clearly like bulked up here. So anyways. You know, judge how you will. This is kind of like, to be honest, like most people are not going to end up looking like Sergi Constant. So when they take a bunch of trend, despite what everyone thinks that you should look like when you take trend, most people who use it don't look like what you would expect. I'm not saying this guy looks bad. This guy looks pretty fucking good here. I'm assuming here he's just bulked up. Um, let's see, last one. 25 years old, 265 to 8, 285, I fluctuate from water and glycogen. So there's a spreading the fucking wings here here he is looking in the mirror post-workout pump um doing a flex here miss you baby is this a snapchat 25 265 285 hooray steroids by here's what i'm thinking via android cut the foreplay just give us the helicopter by can be amazing but probably won't be drug free <laughs> by Yanni, you know what I mean? Um, and then a good, uh, a good gif. That's a challenging wank by this fucking actor that I'm forgetting his name. I think it's an actor. Anyways, where are we? Um, so he was, uh, I'm 6'6", six, six, so the muscle and height results in a lot of weight fluctuation through glycogen and water loss retention. But I have a bitch appetite. I have a very weak stomach. Get ulcer, puke off, and YOLO. I down what I can. And by the way, high trend, horrible for stomach health. I down what I can and suck it up, and that, and at least it's easy to lean out. To Derek specifically, hoping this gets on more plates, more needs. I was talking to Matt on Discord. I will be submitting my resume for product formulation, and I'm totally willing to move. <laughs> what the fuck? It's just like transition from talking about being suicidal on trend, puking his BDSM with his girlfriend, to talking about applying for Girl of Mind <laughs> in like two seconds. My bachelor's is in kinesiology. I was super into studying pharmacology when I got into drugs, so that is my strongest suit. But I know anatomy, biology, physiology, psychology, namely exercise physiology. It's a lot of ologies, bruh. Being my focus in classes and neurological development stuff, would really love to work at the company. And he said you were hiring for that position and to submit my resume to him. Um, sort of. Maybe I should give some context on that. But that is, uh, I am trying to find people to help assist me in formulation more like come not necessarily come up with ideas but mostly like run with shit that i come up with so then i don't have to literally like sit down and tediously contact manufacturers and source every goddamn ingredient myself it's more for you know time efficiency things it's less about having somebody sit down and actually formulate a product themselves at the end of the day i'm still going to be the one on a word document cranking these out but for some of the more, you know, random products that are less, you know, of, uh, I don't know, less my passion or wheelhouse. Um, like for example, if somebody wanted to make a, um, a good, like, I don't know, nootropic infused coffee. And it was just like the cholinergic component of, 
um, Gorilla Mind Smooth or something. They want to infuse some like alpha GPC, a couple, you know, acetylcholinesterase inhibitor or something like that into like a coffee and then go source it, you know, without me needing to oversee them. Yeah, that'd be cool. If you want to apply for something like that and, you know, work alongside me, sure. But yeah, it's kind of like some context and what you can expect. Somehow this video, which probably is like, getting me weird because I'm like literally talking to the guy through the fucking camera right now. So anyways, apologies to you guys who are literally watching this to hear trend stories. Was not expecting a job application hit me in the face. Um, your info has been useful, beyond useful in this endeavor. I followed you for years, not in the PUA days, but ever since you talked about gear. Picks just had been starting out not much over 160 pounds there, 195 pounds, one and a half years natty training. 245 pounds on trend, the third time, 300 pounds, my heaviest. See, what's funny about this is I bet you a lot of people who have no idea about body composition would be like, oh, he's on, he's on shit here. But then they see him here and they're like, oh, he's just fat. Or here they'd be like, they see the video, they see this video here and they'd be like, this guy does not look good. You know, he looks like he's out of shape. He does not look big. When in reality, the guy is a hundred pounds heavier than he was here, you know? But people would say this is on gear simply because he has visible abs with visible size and a little bit of, you know, saucy lookingness. You know, it's kind of hard for somebody who hasn't taken uh, their body to like fatness and back and like far beyond into fatness again and back to kind of like understand that when you see proportions too, like you don't really notice how big a guy is until you're like literally plop him on stage beside somebody else. You'll see guys on social media and you think, oh, they're way bigger than, you know, the next bodybuilder who's going to compete against them on a, you know, whatever fill in the blank show coming up. You think, oh, this guy's definitely going to blow him out of the water. He's way bigger. And then you actually see them beside each other in real life proportionally. You're like, oh, wow, like this guy does not look like he did on social media. A lot of this shit is the case. You know, you see this guy here, you're probably like not thinking a whole lot. And some people would be like, yeah, this guy's definitely on gear, you know, even though he's literally 105 pounds lighter. So anyways, this guy looks fucking good when he's, you know, in shape and uh, he obviously holds a lot of mass. Um, you know, was it necessary to use trend for this? You know, I don't know for certain, obviously with his competition needs, it's kind of hard to say you don't need trend when he is competing in something as uh, taxing as that, you know, there's some of the, some of the, like the powerlifting stuff, some of the strongman stuff. It's kind of hard to say that you can get away with doing your best in a performance aspect without leveraging some of the high, I don't know, sympathetic driven related compounds. Like it's kind of hard to just say, oh, you know, you'll be fine with test and DECA when in reality, there's guys that are fucking snorting halo testing before they get, you know, up for their lift and they have like disproportionate amounts of strength because they literally have like the motor unit recruitment of like a fucking psychopath. So, um, Anyways, as far as, uh, I guess that's the whole thing. There's not any comments to really read through because the thing is deleted. So, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Obviously, there really isn't a conclusive like takeaway that I haven't already iterated, I think, in elaborate detail throughout. So, you know, obviously wait until your brain is developed ideally before you kind of look at this shit or at least have researched it thoroughly so you not only have your diet and your sleep hygiene and your training, you know, dialed in, but you also understand how the body works, how to interpret blood work, what to even order, not just how to design a cycle, but also how to interpret your health status, you know, what to look for, how to be proactive about, you know, organ imaging, stuff like that. So um, glad to see this guy is, um, you know, presumably doing better now in a better headspace than he was before. And um, hopefully shit got better. So anyways, thank you guys for watching. Like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplacemoredates.com. Follow me on Instagram, at moreplacemoredates. Facebook, Snapchat, bitch, you, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. If you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below. My TRT clinic, it's all telemedicine from the comfort of your own home, Gorilla Mind, Nootropic formulas, Gorilla Mode, pre-workout formulas, I designed myself from scratch, and recommended lab tests and diagnostics. Stay on top of your health, what you should be doing. If you expose yourself to this kind of shit, obviously, and anything else I am associated with, it's all in the video description below. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.